While I am a defender of overkill is underrated, I think that nowadays gimbals have to be both overrated and overused. I have a full video ranting about it. So, if you have a gimbal, sell it and cut your balls. For this tutorial you'll need furry balls, three of them. You need camera movement, get your balls on the floor. Without my balls, our last short film would have been much more boring. Stop playing with my balls. Hi, this is Roger Inkinden, and in this channel we do normal camera videos for normal people. Mostly. If you want to see the full rant, please go ahead and check the video. But in a nutsack, in a nutshell, nuts, balls, what a video. Using a gimbal for our last short film was bringing more problems and headaches than actually helping. So I decided to sell it and instead try to find some different solution. So what was the problem I was trying to solve by using a gimbal? Right, not having enough camera movement when using a tripod. Sure, you could use a slider, but that would give you just one dimension of movement. You could have a fancy Edelkron combo, and that is going to give you a motorized alternative to your slider, but that's going to be pretty expensive. I understand it if you have interviews of your Henning doing guitar reviews, but I don't think would add that so much value for a short film. That's the specific use case I'm talking here. So for the Project Underflow short film, I decided to go definitely not without a gimbal and instead use handheld if possible and a tripod. I think that handheld shooting is underrated in today's day of YouTube, but it gives you a sense of reality and urgency that the smoothness of a gimbal does not. On the tripod, the fluid head will already give you some movement, but because I'm really bad at doing handheld and walking at the same time, I was pretty much losing all opportunity of having any tracking dolly or track shots. Having no budget and barely any time when shooting, that meant absolutely definitely not using any dolly tracks. A possible solution is to see me holding the camera on an office chair and then somebody pushing or pulling me with the wheels. The problem is that I had no control over the force, speed, or how does the movement really work. So that meant using my balls, the tennis balls. Three tennis balls, small cut, place them on the legs of your tripod, and you got yourself a dolly. They will be gentle on the floor and if the surface is smooth you can have possibilities to do any sort of dolly or track movements or any combination of the both and at the same time you can still add the fluid head on the tripod so you can do a lot of movement with the camera at the same level using the balls and the tripod and then if you want to go handheld just release the quick release plate and off you go also if you need to change lenses you just do it no need to rebalance the gimbal or spend any time on that for the last short film, I decided to go with Sigma Primes, the 16, 30 and 56 mm at 1.4 from Sigma, using it with the A6400, and that meant that I had no time physically to use a gimbal because I didn't have the time to be rebalancing every time I wanted to change the lens. In the end, it happened so that one of the lenses was mostly used. Please, you can check the video where I explained a little bit more about it, but still, I was changing lenses time to time that I would not have done for sure if I would have been using a gimbal. And then if your choice is between tennis balls or a gimbal, cost might be a factor to consider as well. Chances are that you already own a knife and a tripod, and for less than $10 or euros or pounds, you're gonna have more than three balls actually. If you mess up the first cut, <laughs> then you got yourself a pretty cool moving rig. And then let me show you the three best examples I could find from our latest short film where having my balls on the floor was useful. The tennis ones. The do I still need to be clarifying this? There's the track movement behind Sam, where he goes from I don't care to being alert. Then we have Sam moving around the office, trying to find Jeff. And then one of my favorite shots of the short film, dolling away from Sam as he stares into the investigation board. Here, actually, instead of having the balls on the ground, we had them on the table. And the rest of that scene, it was shot handheld, and I think the results are much better than would have been with the unnatural smoothness of a gimbal. So what are the drawbacks of using this system? For once, a bit too much laughter and lots of jokes about my balls in set. The tennis ones, but they are still my balls. Then carpets. If you have a carpet, this doesn't work anymore as a dolled solution. You need smooth surfaces. Laminates, parquet, vinyl, but not a carpet. 
The next problem is the center of gravity. This is not specific to the balls, but the fact that we're using a normal photography tripod, and then on top of it we have the camera with the lens, uh, quite a bit of small rig cage, rods and pieces, extra battery, the handle, and then the recorder with its own battery. All of that is quite top heavy, and it made the handling a little bit difficult. You can try to fix that by hanging some weights from the tripod itself, but then what it means is that at the beginning, if you're not used to it, you're gonna have some jerky movement. So plan your movements, give yourself some extra space at the beginning and at the end of your movement in case the balls get stuck somewhere or move a little bit around. And of course, practice makes masters of puppets. In summary, if you need a gimbal, get one. If you want one, also get one. It's fine to try new gear. But think through whether the gimbal is really helping you and whether you want or have the time to balance it or if you can find some other creative alternatives of having the movement that you would like and that you're justifying using the gimbal and might make your life easier. All right, I hope you like this video. If you find this useful and you're gonna try it, let me know, and we're gonna see you soon for some more content. And of course, practice makes masters. Practice makes masters. Practice makes masters. Practice makes masters. And of course, practice makes masters.